All right. All right. What is up, everybody? How is everybody doing? What a wonderful day it was today. Oh, my goodness. There was no wind. There was no freaking rain. I got to finish up some of the stuff that I've been wanting to do for my on my boat and finally got the oil change, the gear change, the, all the all the good stuff done to the boat today. Oh, my goodness. And um, as we were sitting out there, uh, as I was sitting out there um, doing a boat today or the other day or Sunday, um, here here comes the clam man. Uh, the razor clam guy was dropping off some razor clams for uh, Rachel. So um, Rachel will be, start, I think she's going crabbing starting next Monday. Um, she's going to start hitting the crabbing grounds and I will be going out with her on Wednesday. So I'm looking forward to go out on my first commercial crabbing trip. And obviously video will be coming. Um, oh, man, I, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up let's remove that. Yeah, so it's been um, it's been nice to have a couple of days that's been just nice out. I mean, the lawnmower, you know, that's I got to cut the grass already. Um, I do got I, I'm changing oil and that stuff, so that's getting all. I mean, it's just it's springtime. It's finally, and the guy we have coming on today, he's I mean, he's got to be starting to ramp up. He's got to be ramping up for all. You know, he's a um, outfitter. He takes a lot of he does a guide service for snakeheads, and uh, he is. Um, he, we're going to talk about his world record, his world record uh, snakehead, how he caught it, what's going on right now, and uh, I'm going to bring him up in in a minute. Actually, I think I'm going to bring him up right now. Um, let me switch some stuff around here. There's Damien. What's up, Damien? How you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. The um, so ha so. Have you been, have you, how you been doing so far on the snakeheads with the weather being so, so, especially April has been, or uh, March has just been a, just like one crappy. So, so my, my winter has been crazy busy. Um, I did get out, uh, what was it in March one time and it was when we were still having a little bit warmer weather. I caught a couple and I haven't really been out since because of the cool, cooler weather. And now that it's ramping, the weather's coming back up, I'll be getting out all this week and we we'll taking customers soon. So the, so how are you now? You're, you're, are you still taking, are you still taking customers? Are you still taking bookings? Are you still got openings? Um, I know that uh, once the spring hits, everybody gets that fish and fever. And before you know it, you're booked up, you know, it might be slow. And then before you know it, you're, you're just slammed and don't know what to do with all the people. So the last two weeks of my April are booked out completely. Um, the majority of my May is booked out completely. Well, there's still some days in, in the middle of in the middle of May that are still left. But um it's the bookings are coming. It's usually it follows the weather. Now that this weather's picking up, I'll start getting more calls coming in. Yeah, because I think next week the wife is saying it's really gonna be it looks like we're gonna have some really nice actually a nice period. I think it's supposed to rain maybe Thursday, Friday, I think maybe I think Thursday, Friday. So I mean are you're pretty much five, seven days a week, yes. um, seven days a week when you're seven, guiding, right? Seven days a week. I, I'll will, I will end up getting a day off here and there due to weather, but I'll book seven days a week. If they look at my calendar and the days that doesn't, doesn't have my name on it, then they're good. They can book it. Now, do you go anywhere also? Or are you stay pretty much down on the Eastern shore? I pretty much stay on the Eastern shore. Could you have your honey holes? Are you giving any of them up? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Now you you have a helper, so you got. I was going to ask you if you want to bring Matt up, and uh, so you guys will take. Oh, let me turn. This off. Um, so you guys can take as many because I know Stephen from. Um, uh, old uh, oh my god, what did I forget? ORC. About? Yeah, ORC. He'll come help you if you got a really really big. Um, yep, Steve. Plan. Steve so how many? So Steve how many? Can you take? So with Matt, with Matt and I. Low land can take up to six, so it's three customers per three customers per license guide by law. So with Matt and I, we can take six. We had Steve in there; we we can take nine. If he when we had Butch in there, we can take twelve. That's cool. I mean, what was the what's the biggest group? Have you taken twelve out at one time? We have done twelve year? before. Yes. How many times did that usually happen? Uh, 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 once or twice a year, probably. 
So, I mean, are you basically by yourself or are you and Matt usually taking, or if you do get six, do you guys go your separate ways and he takes three, you take three somewhere else, or are you guys kind of so, stick together in the same area? It, that, that all, that all depends uh, on the group in that day. Um, a lot of times when, when six, the six come in as a group, they all want to stay together and which, which is fine. We all, we all fish together and sometimes we'll break off in the middle and go to different shorelines, what have you. Um, now Matt and I will both book on the same days. Both of us have like a group of three, and then then we'll make sure we try to keep our space from each other because they're two separate groups. Right. The um, so you're going to be so you're starting this month. So when is your when is your and with this weather coming up here? I mean, are, are you going to stick with minnows or are you going to take both um, lures and live bait? So most of the time, unless. unless Unless we have young kids or it's requested, we do lures. All lures completely. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's cool. I'm like I said, I, I, I won't lie to you. The last couple of times I've heard somebody out there fishing, I don't think they've they've really um I think the live bait, because me and me and uh um Colin went out and we did it and we were throwing lures, but we had some just minnows hanging off the back of the boat and not one not one pickerel, nothing, nothing hit it all day yeah. long, that live bait. And I, um Go ahead, sorry. No, you're right. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, I, I've seen it where I've, I've had min minnows out. Uh, I had a guy, he wanted me to do a video for his, he's making these special bobbers. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing this, this video for him, I had a bobber out and I had the camera going. And I, I get bored with fishing a minnow, so I, I start casting. I caught 13 that day on lures and one on a minnow. That's crazy. That's good. That's, I mean, because usually, I mean, live bait's usually the best. They always say, you I know, mean, you want something live bait's the best. The um, So one of the other reasons why, you know, I, I brought Matt on is, you know, so that was to bring up because he had caught a world record snakehead. Um, now, have for it to be the world record, I mean, in Ind Indonesia, I mean, wouldn't them guys, wouldn't them fish over there get pretty god darn big over there? Oh, I don't quote me on it, but I think the uh, the biggest record for these fish that came out of a different country was around seventeen pounds. Really? They actually, they actually do seem like they're getting bigger over here, or it's more paid attention. There's more people paying attention to it over here, possibly. Are Are you still seeing the crowds down there on Easter Shorts? Are Are because they're so it's it's gotten <laughs> it's gotten really good over on the Western Shore, and I I would think that it. I liked it better when they weren't coming over here, um, but because I remember we can go down there and fish a bass tournament, and you might get, you know, we have seven cars at the chick on the in the parking lot yeah. on a Saturday afternoon. You might be the only one down there sometimes if there ain't people from the shore. But man, I counted thirty some cars down there at one time. I mean, thirty. I think it was like 32, 33 cars. Um, yeah. Now with all the parking regulations and everything, and now they're on the western shore. Have you definitely seen a decline in, in, in the people coming down there? Yes. Now, now that they're spread out, they, the crowds are, are less. Um, unfortunately, some of the spots you still can't, can't park at. Um, but, uh, yes, the, the crowds have gone down. Um, the beginning of the season, you'll see, you'll see it ramp up. And as the season goes on, you'll, the crowds will die back down a little bit. Well, that's but cool. I mean, it's not as bad as it, as it used to be crowd wise. I mean, it's the trash got really bad down there. That was really, that was one of the, the big things. Them trash cans would be, used to be overfilled with trash. If it wasn't laying all over place yeah. or um, I know I went up there and filled a little bit quarter of a bag of trash, just going around, walking around, picking it up. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you right now with the temperatures going, if you were going to take your customers out tomorrow, what would, what would, what would you pretty much have tied on to your, uh, what would you have tied on? Um, I'd have any, I'm, most likely, I, I mean, I, I like chatter baits a lot. I'd have probably two, two different style chatter baits, uh, paddle tail, possibly, uh, like a ribbit frog and I fish a ribbit frog a little bit differently than they were originally intended. I'll right. fish them on, I'll fish them all, not on top, but I'll fish them subsurface. I'll swim them. Um, what else? Uh, inline spinners are good this, right this time of year. Like a, you can either use a maps or what I like to do is use like one of Daryl's uh, inlines with a paddle tail on the back of it. Mm -hmm. So that, that seems to work pretty well this time of year. 
Are you so? If you are going, if you're if you're going to look for them, I mean, would you? I, I would suggest anybody if you're going to be looking for snakeheads, make sure you got an outgoing tide. You got low tide when you get out there. All right. So, from what I've noticed, the the tide, the rivers I fish, the tides move so slow. It can be a factor, but I think it's a smaller factor than a lot of other things, like like the height of how things are, like where, where they can get to. Like this time of year, I also will look for deeper holes, like and a deep hole is relative to to the area you're fishing in. Like on on the chick, a deep hole is eight foot, but there's plenty. There's a couple of those around that you can. I'll take a the cooker. It all it is is a uh, it's a chatterbait style lure. It has a uh, a um, uh, swim bait hook on the back, a weighted swim bait hook. I'll put a crawl crawl lure or a crawl a plastic on the back of that, and I'll take it and throw it up onto the shallows and bring it over the ledge where that hole is, flutter it up, let it flutter down to the bottom, and just I'll work it almost like a jig. And a lot of times that'll trigger a bite. That is. I'm telling every time I talk to any, when I talk snakeheads, I, I think that is the most underrated lure is using just a regular jig and we call it a jig and pig, whether it just looks like a crawdad or actually using a jig with the crawl on the back of it and, f and flipping like you're flipping, flipping for bass. I mean, my buddy tore him up down there. Um, we were down on a trans quake and absolutely tore him up. He must call like 15 snakeheads that day yeah. flipping a jig. And I don't yeah. see, and a lot of them, I don't hear a lot of people talking about flipping jigs. Um, so there you go. There's an art tip. Grab yourself a nice little crawl, crawl that, or a nice Texas rig crawl that, and uh, and flip that in there. So I mean, so what? If you're going to be fishing your chatterbait, all right, what would you suggest to anybody that's watching? What would you What would you suggest for them when it comes to? You know, oh, you know we got comments. I'm not even looking. There's Dave. What's up, Wade? What's How's the new baby, baby? Um, so what is your 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 combo, at least your, your you know, when it comes to your rods and stuff like that, what would you suggest, especially with, um, you know, your braid and uh, what test and all that stuff? Just, just explain what you're going to be using when you're going out there using like a chatterbait or something like that. So, and whoever you talk to, it's always going to be different. Me personally, I like using medium heavy rods. I like using casting rods. Um, a lot of guys are using heavy rods with 50, 60 pound braid, which which is fine. It works. I like medium heavies with 30 pound braid. It's me. Uh, direct tie. Um, now, one thing I will do differently than, than some of the guys when I'm in open water, a lot of times, if like say you're on an op open uh, grass line or, or like frag, frag line, a lot of times I'll be using a uh, glass rod versus, versus a, um, a, a, uh, a carbon rod or something like that. So one, you get, you get a lot of action out of the rod. Two, the uh, when the, when they take it, all you do is you sweep that rod, and most of the time with that glass rod, you get a good hook set. And when they're pegged, they're pegged. There's so much flex in that rod. Yeah, I, I, I like I like a good. I would say a good sensitive tip, and it's kind of hard because frogs. A lot of people don't realize that when you're when you are fishing with braid, and if you don't have a leader on or anything like that, you know, a lot of times you pull that lure right out of its mouth before it really has a time to hit it because you're, you know, because of that braid don't have no stretch whatsoever, and you go hook that fish, and before he's really got it, man, it's you know you you done you know you're getting a hit yourself with it because it's coming right out of its mouth. Yep, and with that with that glass rod, the, when when they do that vortex, that lure can go deeper in, so. It, increases your hookup ratio i don't use a glass rod fishing a chatterbait when i'm around structure just because the accuracy on the glass rod is a little bit harder so i i will use a carbon rod so something with a little bit more accuracy to it but and even even then i'll wait on a hook set so depending on your lure i'd say chatterbaits any, any most subsurface things give it anywhere between one and a half to three seconds unless i mean if the fish is Pulling immediately, you know, you got to do something. But the um, I'm trying. So if so, for me, I, so for me, I'm like that. I'm I'm kind of the 
I'm kind of a medium. Medium. I like to. I'm kind of a six. I know I have more control with my lords when I have a six six rod. When I start getting, and that's I'm really close to cover. You know, I'll use like a seven foot rod. So when, it, so does the length of the rod going to make any any difference? So. Um, for me, I mean, just just what I'm comfortable with. Majority of the time, I'm using a six nine. With all my custom rods are six nine, um, except for my glass rod, it's seven foot. But um, and any of the store bought ones I have, they're they're usually seven foot and somewhere in that range. You feel more com- you f- you feel more comfortable with 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 the seven rod? Is it just that it gets a little bit? Because I would think that you're you're fishing more. I mean, more cover. I mean, lately I've been noticing that you know. A lot of guys are actually staying out a little bit more, especially like if you're going to find yourself like a major point or something like that, that you're you're sticking out a little bit more instead of actually beating up on the bank. Are, are you been doing that lately? So, I mean, for for quite a while now, I mean, I, I a lot of guys would like to fish right next to the shoreline. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like to do that. I like to get, get off me 20, 30, 40 feet, and I'll fish diagonally because especially in the mornings, like on some of these grass lines, you can – you'll see snakeheads come up like 30 feet off the shoreline to come take a breath. But you'll have some that are holed up and you're targeting them back in pockets. And then on that 45 degree off the shoreline, you're bringing it back and you're, you're, you're also uh, potentially catching ones that are out trolling for food or, or moving, what have you. So I, I do not like to be right up on the bank when I'm fishing them. Now, in certain situations, I will. Like, if I know there's a fish right on that bank, and and I can come right around that point and sit there, yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. But I mean, so if so, now that's early in the morning. So early in the morning. So if you're once that sun gets up and you're fishing for them, are are you gonna are you gonna go closer to the bank and really hit closer to where the shaded areas? Um, yes. So I'll, I'll pay attention to the which way the sun's. So I'll look for shade, shaded areas. Uh, some like your uh, south sides are going to have more shade than than your north sides because I mean, the, the sun's leaning towards towards the south. Um, but yes, yeah, so as the day goes on, I will start hitting, try and hit more shady spots. Because because I know they I know they'll stick. I mean, they're like kind of like bass. They will they will be right underneath. You know, like if you're down at the chick or you're down at trans where they got that little ball where they kind of sit right underneath. You know. Um, do you have any do you have any specific lures that you use uh, a certain brand or anything or are you just whatever um i mean do you got a company that you stick with more than than normal uh, their so bait for, and everything so for um, chatter baits and inlines and the cookers i stick with addiction baits with daryl uh frogs i don't i have a i have a million frogs so <laughs> i don't i don't really have a I don't even know if I have a favorite for all good. The um so but says why why are your uh custom rods short butt? Oh, good good point. Um so a lot of my handles when I have them made uh I have them made shorter because it's also gives you more control. You don't have that long butt hitting you. Cuz you get in, you do get into tighter quarters back in a creek something like that. You can kind of whip it around. You can skip right under stuff. It, it gives you a little bit more control you, you you have less control fighting the fish more control with accuracy but in the end i think it's it's a uh the benefit outweighs the uh con for 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 a guy like me that's used to the boat you know flipping from a boat and everything i mean how much more difficult is it when you're uh when you're actually flipping you know from a kayak does it just take <laughs> it just takes a lot of practice it, obviously, it, it takes practice uh so i mean I, I fish in the new canoe, so they're very stable. I can stand up and fish out of them just like, just like a regular boat. But a lot of times you don't have time to stand up. Like when you, you see that fish, you need to get that lure in there as, to them as quickly as you can. And learning to do things in an awkward position, like like sitting down and backwards hand casting, stuff like that, that will pay off big time, especially in a lot of times you see the fish. And if you don't get to it within a couple seconds, it's already moved on and gone. So, so are you doing, are you doing more sight fishing than, I mean, are you, are you out there really sight fishing more before you start really start casting or are you just going down the bank or going to your area and fishing as you're going? Or are you actually like trying to look for any sign? 
you know, I mean, if you're going out to a, a if you're sitting ready to get to an area, are you really, um, are you looking for a fish? Are you looking for a movement? Are you looking for something like that? Or are you just looking for an area you think they're going to be in? I'm always looking looking for the fish, and they will give themselves away. It takes it does take a while to get used to seeing seeing the signs like them coming up for air. I mean, it's pretty subtle a lot of times when they're coming up. Um, just di different movements on the shoreline. I mean, I'll target the pockets on the shoreline as I go, and then keep an eye out as I go for movement fish coming up. Um, Curtain of bubbles coming up at random spots. So, the curtain of bubbles. I mean, for people that don't know, when when they strike, they release a, a pocket of air, and it comes up. And if you see that, and, and you felt a bite, majority of the time, or nine times out of ten, it was a snakehead, unless a turtle farted or something. I don't know. <laughs> hey, remember, if you're watching, please ask him. Ask uh, ask Damien anything. And Butch is asking when fishing grass lines. Are there spots you're targeting more or specific points? Are, are you, so when you're coming up and you, you see a nice big, you know, long patch of grass, are you looking for like maybe, because a lot of times when I'm fishing for bass, you might find that little indent, you know, sometimes they'll sit the right pockets. in the little, a little yep. pocket right there. Um, explain that. So on grass lines, pockets and points are going to be thin. So if you, if you have a point, I, I love, I love points. So a lot of, a lot of fish come from points. Um, but yes, po especially pockets. Uh, deeper back in, you can get into the pocket, the better. Oh. The um, so, all right. So, not last. It wasn't last year. It was a year before, right? It was. Was it last year? It was last year. The the record. Yeah. 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 It was last year. All right. So, all right. So Damien goes out, and you know, he 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 obviously he targets snakehead. And now. now Obviously, are, do you, are do you do that um, 24 7, 365? I mean, do you actually go out? Are you have you been white perch fishing, yellow perch fishing, or anything like that during the winter time? Uh, or, I, I do a little bit of fishing during the winter time. So we'll do some rock fishing, a little bit of rock fishing after my seat, my snakehead season ends. And then Matt and I usually go tog fishing. We usually do cat fishing, but I didn't get a chance to this year. This, this year has been, uh, like I said, way too busy. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, David Confer said that uh, once they put that that um, what's it, five thousand dollar bounty or whatever, or that a five thousand dollar for a way to catch them, he said all up and down the rivers up by me, they're saying, man, there's all kind of trout liners down there trying to catch these catfish. Yeah, you know, I I thought about getting a commercial license and doing a trout line, but you know, David says that it it, it kills other fish, you know, like um, you know, rockfish or anything like that it. it it actually will kill more fish. So I, I kind of threw, he threw a monkey wrench into that one. Yeah. There's Tommy Robinson. There's my, there's my wife's sidekick. Her boyfriend <laughs> on the side. <laughs> All right. So to give us, give us a story. Now you want, do you want to, it's uh, I'm going to put you full screen and uh, I'm going to take my, my ugly butt off. I'm going to put you full screen. I'm going to let you talk about your, your fish, how you caught it. And then once you caught it, you, you, you just showed me, you got the mount of it back already. So tell a story how you got it. And then before you show it, I want to make sure that you explain to people what you had to go through, you know, to, you know, when it comes to pictures and, you know, all the verification you had to go through in order to get the world record. All right. Yep. All right. So basically when I don't get to go fishing for myself that as much anymore as I used to, um, this was one of those rare occasions. I uh, told myself I'm not going to take a camera. I'm, not, I'm just going to go out, have fun. It's not going to be work. Just enjoy myself. Well, I, I didn't know that I was going to have a fish ruin, ruin my fishing trip that day. So started out, it was probably about maybe 30, 30 minutes to an hour goes by. I hadn't really caught anything. I, I catch, catch, caught a uh, crappy. It was a big crappy you know, on a full size lure or full size uh, chatterbait. But uh, anyway, keep fishing around that area. I cast out, I get a bite, and I'm fighting something that I, I know it's big. And it straightened the hook out. I'm like, all right, I think that's happened. Just kept on going, fished up, fished up a little bit. I fished for probably about an hour, hour and a half, didn't get another bite. Started coming back down. I was like, 
I missed the fish in that spot. I cast it back over there with something a little bit heavier. It was the cast of the cooker over in there. Sure enough, same spot. Got a bite. Fought it for probably about maybe 40 seconds. Got it in the net. Like, huh. Oh, finally got a, finally got a PB. It's only been four years coming. No, not thinking record at all. I, I knew the fish was, was was big, but I didn't know how big yet. Put my scale, scales on it, weigh it. My scales, I think the first scale measurement I got was 20.9. So almost 20, almost 21 pounds. Like my scales, my scales broken. It, it's on kilograms or something, which not thinking kilograms would have actually been less, but I thought my scales were going I waited three times and then it finally set in and I started shaking. Like, because at that point, it's a state record, it's a world record. Like, uh, what do I do? <laughs> so I, I started calling around. I called, called Chris, Chris Leslie first. Chris is a good friend of mine. He runs Big Bash USA. Started talking to him. Then I know, um, I know, uh, Corey down in Florida, he has a world record for bullseyes. I called him. He's like, what, what do I do next? And he kind of put me in the uh, right direction. Also, uh, one of my customers, he's a world record chaser, Richard Hart. I called him as well, and he he helped me figure some things out. So we did all the state stuff first. You got to fill out the paper. You got you to go get it weighed at a certified scale, which the certified scale that we went to was cool ice. And then had to have them sign off on it for the state and and world record and for the world record i believe i had to have two people sign off on it but um then i had to meet up with the bio, uh, dnr biologist he measured it and, and all that uh and had to confirm that it was a snakehead so this, the state stuff was pretty easy i mean it was all done within a day and and i think it was like a week later it was released the world record stuff, it just so happens that Matt and I were heading to Florida in a week. So the and we we're going down there bullseye fishing for bullseye snake kids. We went down there and I hand delivered the paperwork to IGFA. And that took took five months for all that to go through. Um, with that you needed to send in uh, twenty foot of line. Um uh, every, all the pictures that, <laughs> all the pictures that, or not all the pictures you took, but most of the pictures that you took, um, and then get all the paperwork filled out. I had to get it signed while I was at Cloy's. I got it signed for, for, um, witnesses. Uh, yeah, it just, that took a while. And if I, if I came through, I think, I think in December, but I, I hadn't heard anything, and I have a weird mailing <laughs> address. So I called, actually called them. Uh, what was it? Probably two months ago. And I was like, I haven't got that paperwork right there. I haven't, I haven't got that that the certificate or anything. And he's like, I sent it. Like, not hadn't heard anything from you. Hadn't got, got it. So it, the first one's got lost in the mail. So they sent me another one, and I also got the uh, plaque the other week for uh, the state record as well from the state of Maryland. But yeah, the fish ended up weighing 21 pounds, uh, 36 and a quarter inches long, and just under a 22 inch girth. That's a big fish. It is a big I mean, what, fish. Th what kind of a what kind of a fight? I mean, was it a was it a a fight? Did it, did it feel unusual while you were fighting it, or did it feel I mean, kind not of? Really. I th I thought I just had a had a bigger than average 30 incher on my line. I, I didn't, I didn't think much of it until, the, until I saw the scale. That's awesome. Um, I know that Tommy had asked a question. He said, do, uh, have you noticed a major decline in 30 plus inch fish, uh, the last few years in the Blackwater area? I would say I've seen an increase. So it seems, it seems like, w like when all this first started, there was a lot of little ones. I mean, people were catching 60 plus fish at the bridges, majority of them look small the the uh population went up and it seems like it it came down and now it's leveled out me personally i think we're seeing better quality fish like i, I so we do a thing with solar bat um on their pro staff i i do a thing where customers 
win a pair of solarback glasses or $150 glasses if they catch a 10 pounder on their trip. I had a guy, <laughs> there was a guy that said, um, that I, that's way too high. It needs to be six pounds. Well, if we did six pounds, we'd be giving $150 glasses away every trip. Yeah. I, 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 I think the quality, the quality that I've been seeing the last year or two has been increasing. Well, I think, well, that probably has a lot to do with not getting as much pressure down there as it was. The, yes. You know what I mean? And um, I mean, that's, that's good. I mean, I, like I said, I haven't, I'm going to make a trip down there and do some bass fishing. I should be going tomorrow. I should be going tomorrow. You know, I was going to go on a, I was going to go on a chop tank today. I was going to, I'm ha this is kind of, I'm sitting here talking to you, but you know, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a situation uh, with my mom. So that's, I'm getting all these phone calls. Uh, if you need to answer, but go answer it. Yeah. Hold on one second, man. All right, sorry about that. I mean, it's I, know, I got my my sister in laws are my sister in laws are calling and everything, um, and my, my wife and I are talking to uh, one of them now. So, all right, well that's cool. The um, I, I thought that at the beginning of it, when I started seeing all all the pressure down there, and um, that's where I think it helped. I thought it helped the bass fishing, you know, when it comes to. Because no matter what, no matter what people, no matter what people say, I always say this with, um, I always say this with Cambo when we talk. Okay. All right. That's cool. Uh, the, um, I was telling him that, you know, when we were down there, a lot of people didn't, you know, when you're seeing what's going on down there, a lot of people, while well, the signs don't really say that, but. The signs for me, like Butch, Butch hates to get green fish. Um, <laughs> but when we were down there doing tournaments, you know, I've, I've mentioned a, a bunch of times that when we were doing tournaments, you know, we seen snakeheads, you know, the first time was one and then it was five and then it was, you know, and then going down there, we were, we were actually seeing a, a, not a, a big portion of littler fish bass fishing for a while, you know. And I, and I told him when we started seeing all that pressure coming down there with people, you know, a lot of people were putting them back, but there was a lot of people taking them. And I thought that helped the population of all the other, any other fish out there, whether it come to bass or anything actually, you know, help get back because it was like two years later, um, we were going out there and we start seeing the one and two pound largemouth when we were fishing, yeah. which was, I thought was good. I'm, um, as much as I don't like the pressure down there, I kind of thought it was good to kind of level them out. Um, but, but what what do you what do you think about that? Do you think that um, not having as much pressure down there is why you're getting um, the more of the quality fish? Not not as much pressure down there. Um, I I honestly don't don't know. So, yeah, I've I've noticed an increase in quality in the last, last couple of years. Um, and it, I've heard I've heard some biologists say that like what the uh, population will do is uh, it'll ramp up, it'll come down, and then it levels out. And we could be at that le level out period where the, where there's just kind of on a steady plane. But so what? I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. That's right. That's dude, you're not that old. I, that's stuff that I do. Like, <laughs> if you had a if you had a go, if you had a go lore not called a chatterbait or inline what what would it be if you didn't have, I, guess, I guess if you didn't have a chatterbait or the um the inline what 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 would you actually use uh like a curly tail or um a curly tail or god I think a curly tail or river frog something of that that lines um paddle tail i do like fishing subsurface i will fish top water and I, and I love fishing top water, but I want to fish for what what the fish want, not not what I want. Hey, so. hey make, make sure if anybody, if you if you would really appreciate going to uh, the YouTube channel, um, that would be awesome. And uh, 
and subscribing to it. And wherever you're at, if you can hit that like button, that, that helps anybody that you're watching, YouTube, live streams, whatever, you hit that like button, that that, that kind of helps. It helps it helps put it out, and they'll share it more often because we want to make sure that Damien and – well, just a little bit more, just go into detail with the Lowland and, you know, when you – what made you want to actually start the uh, – were, were you just doing were you just doing that good, you know, catching it or more of a consistent basis where you thought that you – were good enough that you thought you could bring people out to enjoy, you know, doing some snakehead fishing. So the, I've had a lot of harebrained ideas over the years, trying to do my own little business, stuff like that. I've wanted to work for myself for a long time. Um, I mean, there's a lot of factors into it, but um, part of it, I, I was working for a welding company on the other side of the so other side of the bridge. I, had, mm -hmm. especially where I live now, I was driving an hour and 40 minutes one way. So that was, three hours plus of driving a day with no traffic. Um, and that, got old, that got old quick. I did, did that for 10 years and that got old. Um, another thing, uh, what a lot of people probably don't know is I, I was born with club feet. So standing on the concrete in a welding shop all day was starting to get to the point where it was getting to be a little bit much. Um, this is a little bit easier on, on my legs. So kind of started is I, I was fishing tournaments. I started doing good in tournaments and I, I ran into a guy down there. I met, met him one day and he uh, talked to him for a while, fished with him all day. He was a, uh, come find out he was a uh, charter captain in South Carolina and just talked to him and kind of sparked the idea. And, and then he, he was like, you going to be around tomorrow? I was like, no, i got to work. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to call out. I took him fishing that day. <laughs> the next day, had a blast. He had a stringer full. And I was like, I can do this. We'll, we'll do, do something part-time. Just do it on the weekends and whatnot. Just, and just built from there. Do you got to get a special, um, do you have to get like a special license? I know if you're doing a charter, do you actually have to get all the license or guide service like they would if they were a guide on the Texas Bay doing rock fishing and stuff? No. So we need, we do need a guide's license. We do not need, we do not need a, uh, captain's license though, because everybody's in their own vessel. Um, so it is the limited, it's called the limited guide's license. Uh, the, requirements you, you need for that and like you're going to need your first aid and cpr and mm -hmm. once you have that you can go get your guide's license so having so what i would ask you is that taking out people i mean most of the time you, you might get a lot of people that don't have probably has never picked up a fishing rod before um you want to tell me a really F, a messed up story and then you want to tell me a real good story you want to tell how many people have taken a dip into the water in your kayaks uh, let, last year, three, three people, um, one was a buddy, <laughs> uh, he, he was stubborn. He, he's, he's an old, older feller and he was stubborn. Wouldn't wait for me to go, you know, help him get out of the boat. He stood up legs locked and there he went. I will say this with the new canoes, we've yet to have somebody actually flip one. We've had people fall out of them, but they <laughs> haven't flipped them. So, uh, one guy, um, Wayne, he got, he got, so he, he was adventurous and he, he, uh, he had moved further down the shoreline and he hooked into a decent fish and we had, it was a big group. It was six people. So Matt and I are back and forth between six people. Well, he, he had split off from the group a little bit. Matt's pedaling as hard as he can to get to this guy. He, uh, so he didn't have a, the guy didn't have a net with him. And so Matt was going to go net it for him. And he leaned over and he was going to gill the fish. Well, as soon as his fingers touched that fish, that fish shot underneath the boat. And he he did a complete flip. I will give him this. His hair never touched the water. His hair never got wet. Did a complete <laughs> flip out of the boat. Oh man, I, I wish I had that video. I mean, I was um we were I was down on the chick and we were actually going to the naked fish and I took a buddy, a buddy of mine, uh, two 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 friends, a buddy of mine and, and his friend and uh so I'm on my boat and I got the troll motor and I had to go real, real shallow because we had to get a lure that was hung up. And I just, once I thought I was clear, 
I turned around, I put my troll motor on and started go- looking the other way. And uh, man, I hit a stump and I just, I literally fell right off the boat, right in the water. I got it on, I got it on YouTube. That's a, that was, that was pretty funny. And all I kept saying was hit the camera, hit the camera. Cause I was trying to, you know, make sure it's, it's saved. Cause I had it on looping, you know, I had it, uh, yeah. you know, if you're, I had that on looping and uh, so I wanted to make sure I save it and I uh, kept looking for it. I, like, I can't find it. I can't find it. But I had it. That was, um, I was pretty, I was rated, right I was rated right at the beginning of the year. It was, it was, I was soaking wet and I was pretty chilly. Usually I have something in my boot um, for that. Um, so have you had, have you had any kind of incidents where you were like, holy crap? I mean, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening right now. Um, no, no crazy incidents. No, there's people maybe falling over. I mean, have, so does it take patience? I mean, when you have somebody that's new, I mean, literally, I mean, has really almost never picked up a fishing rod and you're trying to teach them to cast and knowing that most of the time you're going to try to have to cast, you know, if you, a lot of times you got to cast up into cover and into the structure and stuff like that. Um, do you, it, um, that's gotta be pretty challenging. Yeah. So, uh, patience, patience is key. Um, if you want to be a, a fishing guide and you don't have patience, you don't want to be a fishing guide. I'm um, not going to be a fishing guide. I don't have patience. <laughs> So for, for the most part, I'd say 98% of my customers are great or what they, they listen well. A lot of times the issues we'll, ha- we'll have is when people don't want to listen. <laughs> like, uh, what? like what, what, I mean, what are you telling somebody to do that they're not doing? Um, I've had, and you'll have to, re- and, and th- this is common. It, it's, it's an easy mistake to do. A lot of people will get up real close to the shoreline, especially that it's always the person in the front. It's always, they'll, they'll go next to the shoreline and they'll, uh, they're pretty much scaring every, all the fish in front of everybody else. Right. So it's just, it's just gentle reminders, come, come back, stuff like that. Um, on tougher days, I would, I will ask the customer if, if they want me to f- fish behind them and try to help if I can figure out a bite. The only time I've ever had an issue with that, and some people say no, which is fine. Uh, the only time I ever had an issue with that, I asked the guy if he wanted, he was having a tough time. I asked him if uh, he wanted me to fish behind him, try to f- help figure out the bite. And he told me I was, I'm doing everything right. There's no point in you casting. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so he, so he, he knew it. He knew it all. Yeah, you get you get that every once in a while, and that that's that's to be expected. So, so, so you've been doing this now. Has it been two years now that you've been guiding? How many years you've been actually guiding? Uh, full guiding time. full time. Full time. This is going to be my fourth year full time. Four year. I mean, has it been? So I've, so I've had three full years so far. So has it been? Has it been good? I mean, obviously it's good enough. You're not. Are you, you're not working your other job at all? This is your full time gig. Uh, right? I, I, I will do welding work in the winter, and, and part part of it is to keep myself sane. But yes, it, it, the, this is substantial for for a job for me. I guess it's like Rachel. Well, Rachel, that story, you know, her crabbing crabbing all summer long, you know. But she switches. She actually, man, she's she's one tough young lady, man. She's been oystering all winter long, and uh, then she's right now she's off. I think she had this year. I think she had a little bit more time off, um, but. Um, cause she didn't use her boat. She actually went with Glenn. If you know, who Glenn Blau is the Blau's up here, Glenn Blau, Thanks. um, Blau seafood. Yeah. Um, I went, I actually got a video going out with him on the, on the oyster boat and she actually was on the boat with him, um, oystering all winter long, which is good. It saved her boat. And then she got her boat all ready. So she said her boat's ready to go. I'm, I'm kind of excited. I know my wife is excited. You know, if we keep this warm weather going. It won't be too long before we get out and do some crabbing. Um, so here, let me, let me bring you up. I want to, you got a couple things. So let me ask you something real quick. So you've been for the Northern snakehead and I've, I've asked Ed, Eddie Weber this. So what's the difference? What is the difference between the, the bullseye snakehead and the Northern snakehead that you can see? Um, I think in my personal opinion, I think the bullseyes are easier. Um, and they, and one of the main reasons I say that they would, almost every single time they wake on it. Like it's, it's almost like it's, and it's awesome. It's, it's like the, that jaws waking up, waking on the bait. They will do that almost every single time. You think they're more, they're more aggressive than a Northern snakehead? It, it, se- it seems like it. Yeah. 
Did, did you eat it? Did you eat it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, said- Matt, so I've eaten it on two different occasions. Uh, one when Jake, Jake Canals and I went, and one when uh, Matt and I went last year. And honestly, it tastes the same as the uh, as the Northerns. It's just maybe not as firm of a meat as the Northerns. What did, what's your favorite way to cook it? So it was blackened, but my wife's and courtesy of uh, friends of ours, uh, she started making this uh, Parmesan baked fish. And I, I don't know how she does it. It's magic, but it tastes amazing. The, um, so um, Kevin Ball asked, um, how long do you spend on a fish before you start moving on? So if you got a bunch of, so like you, you, you see a couple or you see some spawning fish or you see a fry ball, how long do you sit on that fry ball before you like, ugh. Or do you would come back to it or something like that? Um, a lot of times I don't spend a lot of time on fry balls. Uh, majority of time I'm hunting for feeding fish. I mean, if I see a fry ball, I will fish it. But um, it kind of depends. A lot of it depends on how big the fish is, <laughs> if, if, if I can tell. Um, so on rough days, if I'm on the rougher days where bites are few and far between, I will spend 45, 50 minutes on a single fish just because I know he's there. And I know if I work him long enough, I can get him the bite. That's, I, a, I, that's kind of fun. Do you switch, do you switch lures a lot? You just, are you, do you go away and then come back and try and sometimes I will, do, I will do that. Um, like I, I do it a lot with, I do that a lot with bigger fish. I've caught a lot of, a lot of bigger fish doing that. Um, it, especially if they felt hooks, if they felt hooks, I'll go away and then come back maybe an hour hour and a half later um, so i got my got my I, I got an awesome sexy producer or fan just go down and follow follow the, the wire what that wire the wire follow the wire there's a wire hanging right next to the pole and go down there there's a, there's a plug down there i want everybody to see my, my pretty face hit the blue light the blue light there we go see <laughs> so you can turn it you can turn that one off though see we're not all particular here the um so I want I want you to show everybody you got to you you have a couple of fish with you, and yep. I'm going to take me off. I'm going to bring you. Up. Where'd you go? Can't hear you. Can you hear me? Hmm. Right. I no, nope, I can. I'm sorry, buddy. That was just me. When, when I go off stage, you're not going to be able to hear me. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So sorry. why don't you go ahead and show everybody? Everybody, I'm going to bring you up by yourself so you can uh, you can talk. I'm going to bring you up full screen so everybody can get a good look at it. Okay. All right. So the first one I'm going to show you. This is it, this is a decent fish. It, it's probably about an eight pounder. So it's just kind of give you something to. Uh, compare this to because we were looking at it on camera earlier and it didn't it obviously didn't look like that big of a fish on, on the camera how long did um so so who did who did your mount so uh dan dan johnson he uh dan johnson tax he's the one that's done the mounts so i've been working with him with the uh with the record so the record actually I haven't seen a lot of taxidermists do the darker pattern like with a lot of these bigger fish especially around here in dorchester that we see so working with him trying to get figure out the darker pattern so the the record it it looked perfect before it was cleared and then when it got cleared it ended up darker but uh, he did he did two of them for me he did a 16 and a half pounder and a uh, and a uh the 21 pounder the 16 and a half pounder you got to see it in person it the the pattern on it is perfect it, it looks great for what these darker fish look so here's Here's the 21 pounder. So, I guess let me try to back up a little bit. There's the 21 pounder. And the camera, the camera on here makes it look even darker versus that's that's like me short and fat. Versus this guy. You put them on the same plane, you can see the size difference. Yep, that, that, like I said, that's me. I short and fat, buddy. I'm telling. <laughs> so the girth on this thing was incredible. I mean, a lot of guys that I mean, my my hands are huge. 
I can't even get my hand down to the bottom of his belly. All right, and for the 16 pounder, gunner fish. And that is the 16 pounder. So you can kind of see it on the camera where you can see you like with these fish, they're, they're really dark, but you can see the patterns underneath. So yeah, we'll be, I'll be having another, another one made of the 21 done more, more like this one. That's all. Uh, that's pretty, uh, 21 pounder is huge. Yeah. 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 That's a big, that's a, that's a, Anything that's 20 pounds is, is big, man. Yeah, we, yeah, we hold the 20 pounder and the 16 pounder next to each other. So, I, I mean, they're, they're right around the, they're close to the same length, but, that's, the, that's, but the girth and the, and the width on this one is just crazy. Did you did you end up? I mean, obviously you kept it. Did you um? Did you end up eating it? No, because he, he the taxidermist had to have it for uh, molding purposes. Oh, okay. Oh, so he actually molded. I thought maybe I thought a lot of them now they just take the um the measurements and then try to take pictures of it and make it as a picture. They they do, but that's with the pre molds. But the thing with a uh, world record, there are new pre molds for that one. Yeah, I guess you're. Yeah, I guess, I guess you're doing right. You're all right there. The, um, well, that's cool, Damien. I mean, so when you so you're taking that trip down to Florida, um, did you run into any alligators? Because I I don't know, man. I, I want to go down there, but I have to take my dogs, and they're too stupid. They're gonna jump in the water and get eaten. Yeah, I'd be careful with the dogs. <laughs> but, but I mean, it, it, just when when you're fishing in Florida, keep an eye out around your surroundings, especially at your feet, because they can sneak up on you. And you just keep an eye out, and be fine. You plan on going down to Florida anytime soon to go do it again? Uh, most likely in July, yeah. Really, that's cool. Yeah, because we, we go to ICAST every year. So, um, do you, do you have um? What, if you, I don't know if anybody wants to know, but uh, do you like to give um the guy's name, the taxidermist that did your stuff? Do you have his phone number with you, or just his name, or is he on Facebook? Or um, let's see. I don't. Know. Let me see if he's on Facebook. I can't. I honestly can't remember. I just have his phone number. And. Yep, he, he's on Facebook. It's Dan John, Johnson Taxidermy. Um, he should have a website here. Um, Hold on one second. Let me see if I can do something. Let me, let me do something real quick. Hold on. Dan Johnson? Yep. That's his Facebook page. I, I sent you a message with with his Facebook page link. All right, let me go back here real quick. Let me see something. And, and like I said, a lot of times with the cameras and all that, they don't. Hold on, let me. Uh... This stuff off the back here and let me scroll down. Yep. All right, there's uh there's Dan Johnson, Taxidermy. Close that out. And his number is right on the page. So he said Dan Johnson Taxidermy. Um, let's see some photos. So hey, this, this for example, this, this is actually Bart Shortle's fish. And this was the oh. first one he ever did. Hold on one second. Okay. He's got a nice looking. I got a, I got him on a small mouth. That's the only picture I think I've seen so far. Oh, I don't know if he does too much on social media and all that. That's that's all he has. But I, I still, if you look at it, that that's a nice looking. Uh, if you look at the small mouth, that's actually a nice looking small mouth. Yeah, nice little area right there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Cool. All right. Yeah, we got two. Yeah, I got two puppies. I, I don't know why I got two. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. But they're good. They're good. They're good. The uh, 
Let me see if anybody's got any questions for you, Damien. Kaz yep. caught Kaz caught all the snakes. Does he got that? He, does he? Well, he can't move them anyway. But um, I haven't heard too much from Kaz. Has he uh, been pretty? Have you you talked to him? Aren't you, don't you like? Aren't you right down by I, him not too far? I have. I haven't talked to Kaz in quite a while. Really? Yeah. So if if somebody wants to um, get a hold of you, um, what is the, what would be the best way to book a trip with you? So and you can have, like I said, you can have up to twelve people, right? You got enough for twelve people? Yep. So and a lot of that we got we got to do the figuring and get make sure all the guides are available, make sure everybody's in line. So it, take, it takes some some working to get that done. But yeah, um, they can call me and my numbers. Uh, where's it at? Right there, four zero four four three one five two eight. Wrong person. Yeah, right, right there, four zero four four three one five two eight. Um, my website, it, honestly, one of the easiest ways, if you go onto the website, um, you can look at the calendar, you can figure out what date you want. There's a, a, a book now button you can click and it takes you to a form it fills out that gets sent to me. Um, I get the date on hold. Um, and once the date's on hold, we pay a deposit. And so the de our deposits, it's a hundred dollar deposit per license guide. So if it's just me, it's a hundred dollar deposit. If it's Matt and myself, it's a $200 deposit. Uh, if it's four of us, it's a $400 deposit, but, um, get the deposit paid. And after that you're booked, uh, we will get up with you anywhere from a week to three days beforehand. Cause we, we move around on three different rivers. We never, uh, we never know where we're going to be. We, we are, we're always trying to follow the fish, figure out where, where the best bite is. Um, so we send, we'll send you a drop pin and meet time and the meet time can, can be adjusted. If, if like, say you're coming from really far away. Um, or like a lot of times in the spring, I, I'll do a lot of evening trips in the spring because you'll have a better bite. Once that sun's had a chance to warm the uh, water up. Yeah, it's been a it's been a pretty nice day. All right, so so let me tell you about the ecosystem the way I th what I think about it. So down in Blackwater where he's at, um, I think um, Cam Boris has said this enough. Where you're, you know, you're pretty much the trans quaking and a chick. I mean, you barely. I mean, you have pockets of. I mean, there's one pocket on a chick might get around ten, eleven foot, but you have like a one to two foot area, and it's very shallow. I think that's where they'll hurt worse than if you're like on a Potomac or if you're somewhere else because you have such deep water, you know, you have more, it's just, I would say it's more room. There's more, even though, it'll, I mean, I've watched a guy catch bass snakehead right off the same dock, you know, so they're, they're I think they're just learning to kind of get along, you know, because bass are going to eat snakehead, snakehead is going to eat bass and, you know, everybody, everything's going to eat everything. But when it comes to ecosystem, I system, I know right now, um, the CCA, um, Fish Hunt Maryland, right now they have, um, they got a bounty on them. You know, I think even the, uh, we're talking about blue cats too, but I mean the whole blue, cat, so they have a, a program right now for blue cats and snakeheads, invasive species and flatheads. Um, if you catch them, they want you to, you go to CCA, you know, I think uh, me and, um, me and uh, David was talking about it last week. Go to CCA. You can sign up for it. So whenever you catch it, they're one. I want you to do a couple things, open it up, see what they're eating, uh, wait where you're at and all that good stuff. And then I think every month on Fish Talk Magazine, Lenny Rudow will actually be giving away, giving away prizes and stuff uh, for anybody that is participating in that. So, but hurting the ecosystem, I think they hurt because they're invasive, but are the snakeheads as, um, hurting the system like blue cats would be. I would think the blue cats would definitely out, definitely are going to be it's going to be hurting the ecosystem way more than what I think a snakehead's going to do. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> uh, so I get asked this question a lot, and honestly, especially running a business, I I don't get involved in this because it's got turned into a whole political thing. I'm not a biologist. <laughs> um, I will say what I've what I've seen. I catch plenty of snakeheads. I catch plenty of bass. I I don't know. It, it, <laughs> and, 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 and here's the thing: I'm, if somebody wants to come come fish with us and they want to release every single one they catch, yeah. 
that is fine. I have people do that all the time. It doesn't bother me. If people want to come and keep everyone they want to catch, that's with, well within their rights for law. They can do that too. It, yes, it doesn't matter it, whether no. which way. Like, like I said, it, it for me it got turned into a whole big political thing. It it wasn't it wasn't good for business for me to get into all that. Well, that's cool. I'll get into it. It ain't my business. I'm a bass fisherman, and I, I'm not. I'm 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 a, I'm a little okay with that. Um, I'm, I like to chick. Chick. I usually have a pretty. You know, I'm telling you what. The last couple of years going down on chick. I'm. I was down there, and I know the water temp was only like thirty some degrees, and I still caught three or four nice bass out of there. You know. So I mean, right now the bass fishing should be that if if they haven't. I don't know if they spawn yet. Usually it's everything seems kind of earlier this year. Do you do you see that? Seem uh, things kind of a little bit earlier yeah. than normal. I saw. I did. I did see some carp splashing around. I hope they're not getting ready to. They're they're a pain in the ass when, when they start spawning. Oh, yeah. When I went over to um the gunpowder at Seneca, and we were fishing for them, and it just and twice, and it seemed like it. If it wasn't a catfish, it was a, it was the carp. They were all up in the shallows, all up in the cat. You know. Coon t- the the coon tails, cat tails, whatever it was, and they were just, they were all in the shallows. Just yeah. it, was, it was, it was a freaking mess. <laughs> so you know how to get a hold of them. Damien's a really good guy. He, he and I keep hearing he if he'll put you on fish. Um, you know what I will tell you is that fishing's fishing. It isn't called catching for, for for that reason. But you know I'm sure he'll. Yeah, you, know, you have a have you have you been out there? Have you? I'm sure you've been at least. Have you been skunked? Uh, what this year? Well, no, not this year. I mean, have you been out to where you've taken a customer out and you've been skunked? Or, or let me oh, put it this yeah, way: yeah. if if the if the snake heads aren't really biting, will you kind of ask your customer, "Hey, you know, this is kind of not happening. We don't know if this is working right. That maybe we should target something else." Did you ever try to target bass yeah. or anything like that? Yes, I, I I have tried that a lot. A lot of times, uh, but they they want to go for snake heads specifically, so they they will. Keep trying, trying to target. Um, skunks do not happen very often, but they do happen. Right. So All right, well, that's it, cool. as, as part of fishing, uh, I do this every day, and I still get skunked. So when when somebody when somebody books a trip with you, what what do you provide, or what and what do they need to bring with them? Um, if they're going to come and do a trip with you and you and the mat, what should they bring, and what will you provide? We pretty much provide just about everything they need, kayaks, PFDs, paddles, rods, lures. Um, the only thing the only thing they need to bring is they need a Maryland fishing license because we unlike a charter boat captain, we can't get the um, we can't get the boat license that covers everybody. I, I wish we could and I've I've even tried to see if we could get get that boat license for if I could get one for every single boat and it, they won't let us do it. But um they need uh they need their fishing license. Um, they bring definitely would bring water and snacks, especially on a, if a, if you're doing a full day. I would definitely bring some kind of snack, something to keep you keep you energized. Bring water. I I mean I find myself I would have a whole cooler, and I do find myself when I start getting into fishing that I realize two three hours into it that you know or at least two to three hours into it I'm realizing that I'm not drinking anything. Yeah. You know, especially on a hot day, you don't you don't realize it. But I'm telling you, when you go out there, you make sure if, if if you don't bring anything to eat, if you got a whole day and you don't bring nothing to eat, it, it's kind of nuts. But you make sure you bring some food. But you got to bring water. Don't be bringing a bunch of soda because so, I don't know about you, but soda isn't going to it's going to help you when it's 90 degrees out. No, uh, either what water and when it gets hotter, I'll I'll, I'll actually bring I'll I'll bring a little thing of Gatorade for myself too. Yeah, that's that's yeah. pretty cool. The yeah, um, go ahead. So when when you're out there baking on a kayak seven, seven days a week, uh, you start cramping. You'll you'll start cramping, and it, it sucks. So Gatorade will help help with that. Does it does it, get, does, it uh, does it get kind of tough on you after you know come the end of the season? Uh, what can I ask? If does, do you finally say you know thank God it's kind of over with? Um, I mean, there's not in a bad way, but you know what I mean. No, no, there, there, there's a period that towards the end where I start I start getting worn out, um, but. Honestly, right, right after I, I I take off the entire month of November to be able to hunt and fish for myself. So November, I'm pretty much that that is that's my vacation right there. 
and all I'm doing is hunting or fishing. You do any sick of deer hunting down there since you're down there? No, I, I grew up I I grew up with sick of deer in my backyard, and I went sick of deer hunting maybe twice. I, I've always it's it's always been whitetail. I love chasing whitetail. What's your big? You got anything hanging up? What's your biggest? What's your biggest deer? Um, my biggest. I've sh I've shot a ten point, but it was a smaller ten point. Uh, my biggest is an eight point. I have. He was uh, probably in the one thirties, one forty range. That's cool. I got like a spike buck, a spike. That's my biggest buck. I'm not a hunter. I try. I, I got all the hunting gear, but my wife said, hey, she said we starve. We starve <laughs> if I had to catch, if I had to go kill kill food. <laughs> So uh, the majority of the hunting I do, I do mostly bow hunting and I, I do it the hard way. I hunt with a long bow. So I, I, I had, I had my shooter, but I had my shooter, butt this year at 30 yards with a long bow. And I was like, you know what? You didn't practice well enough this, this year. You're I'm not, I didn't, I didn't take the shot back when I shot that bow every day. Yeah. I would have taken the shot, but. Yeah, just I, I let more way more deer walk than than I shoot. I can tell you that. The uh, my my buddy's the same way. That's that's traditional. You know, I'm I'm thinking about so I'm thinking about taking this podcast and uh, like I was telling Damien earlier. I think the shorts. I don't do the shorts no more. Um, I might do it on Instagram, but I think the the, the live streams and the shorts were kind of hurting the long the long form. I was telling you, so I, I've been. Leave in the comments. I'm thinking about moving the podcast to um, it's going to be called Outdoors in Maryland podcast. You know, another YouTube channel. I'm debating whether to do that or not. Um, I, I'm not too sure with that. Um, and I, I, See, I'm just like you. I was I was leading into something and I completely forgot what I was going to say. I was literally leading going into to say something and I forgot. Oh, I know what it is. I'm going to try something. And this is an inspiration from a channel that I watch. If none of you guys ever heard it, if you, Damien, if Damien, if you guys got long drives, all right, I've been finding myself listening to podcasts, you know, you know, whether it's fishing or whether it's something else. So lately, me and the wife, every week now, it's like religious. We've been watching them for over a year. It's a guy called Mr. Ballin. And Mr. Ballin tells you stories from strange, mysterious, you know, from serial killers to, to where, people get lost in the woods and how that, or it's it, people get lost out of nowhere. One minute they're sitting with you. The next minute they're like, they're lost forever. Stuff like that kind of creeps up really cool. And he literally sits down in front of the camera and tells you a story. Now with my Dunduck accent, I don't know how good this is going to be over, but I started, I'm going to start another YouTube channel and it's going to be, it's called um, Epic, Epic Outdoor Stories. And what it's going to be about, it's going to be nothing about, it's going to be nothing but hunting and fishing, whether it's maybe telling a story of Fred Bear and, you know, something like that, or talking about a general, my first story is one that has to do with the Bassmasters and the, um, the Bassmasters. And uh, I'm going to see how it goes. You know, well, I, I haven't decided how I'm going to do it, but I started, to, I got the channel up, but I haven't, um, I got everything there. just how I'm going to read it and where I'm going to put it. I don't want to sit here like this and do it. That's pretty creepy. Um, but, but I think it'd be cool. And it's really just kind of talking about, you know, hunting and fishing, whether it's, you know, a tragic story or it's whether, you know, it's something that, you know, maybe, I don't know. I, I, I there's a bunch of stories and I think it's going to be kind of, kind of cool. A lot of people, when they do the long driving, like I do, I drive an hour, I drive an hour to work and I find myself, listening to whether it be a podcast or something like this, I just turn it on and it kind of gets me through that hour pretty quickly. All right. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to let Damien go, man. I hope you had a good time. Like I said, this, I just asked you last week. I appreciate it. Maybe later on, uh, maybe after the season, maybe after the season goes, maybe we'll, you and Matt can come up yeah. or, or maybe since we kind of live close together and you, and uh, maybe we can get together somewhere at a, a tackle shop or I got the pub down here. Maybe come into the pub and I'll I'll buy you a beer, buy you a burger, and you can sit down and we'll we'll talk how your season went. Yeah, sounds good. That sound cool. Yep. yep Damien, thank good. you very much. Hey, won't you do me a quick favor, really quick, yep. really quick? Show show that uh. Show that what? Uh, I I didn't hear what you said. Hold on. Sh show that fish again. The big. Oh.
just does not look that big on the camera. It, it, it well, you know, when you're when you're holding it up and hold on, if when you're holding it when you're holding it up and you got you got that big giant belly hanging there, you know, when you got that big giant belly, it does look a little bit bigger there. <laughs> It looks. It does look a little bit lighter there when you're holding it than when you have it, uh, than when you yeah. have it with you there. And you. So, another thing, that's something I forgot to mention. I don't know. Do you remember when the, uh, oh, what's it called UPS was? They were talking about having strikes and whatnot. Yeah. So that fish had to sit in the freezer for a month because I wasn't going to send a uh, fish. I wasn't gonna send that fish when that was all going on because if they went on strike and that fish sat sat somewhere in a warehouse and rotted, it, that would have been bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I did some research and it sat there, and then when it got to the taxidermist, he was he was backed up, so I had to sit in his freezer for a little while. She actually lost she lost just about an inch on the mold. Really? Was it? Um, did it did it lose? I mean, the other one the the picture doesn't really. I guess I really don't have like the, the 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 other one you have where it has really a lot of designs, really a lot of um, um. That is a pretty that is a pretty dark, that is a yes. pretty dark fish. I mean, I don't see too much of the uh, the patterns on it like you would you don't normally see. Uh, as they get bigger, do you know do you notice them getting more like this than you do the smaller ones? A lot of a lot of the bigger ones are darker. Um, I have seen in some clear what clear water situations where the bigger ones still have a nice vibrant pattern, but it's still usually not as vibrant as say like a 14 incher or 20 incher. I have, um, one, one other thing I have this, if you go to my YouTube channel and you look down in, in one of my descriptions, I think the last, last one, last two, I got this, I'm putting on, I'm put, that's going to be on the back of a t-shirt called crushing it. Mm -hmm. Um, that's pretty cool. Hold on. M&T. Hello, Outdoors of Maryland. What's up, M&T Living? Under, under dog Outdoors. Enjoying this episode. Great mount. Yeah. So I'm going to get, so I'm get, I got that on shirts. On um, the link, the link to buy that on, on, on a, on a shirt is cool. I wish I, I, I should have brought the shirts up like, like a, like a dummy and I didn't do it. But, um, li living and cooking, M&T living and cooking. All right, people are jumping in. All right, well, Damien, I appreciate you coming on, man. I, I appreciate you hanging on. We've been on a little bit over an hour. And uh, like I said, well, after the season's over with, I'll try to get in touch with you and see if you want to come in or we'll just do this again. Bring Matt on and uh, tell me about your season, all right? Yeah, it sound, sounds good, man. If you you want to go do it out, out somewhere, we can go do that or we do it on here. No matter yeah. me. That's cool. I appreciate it, man. Yep, yeah, I appreciate like you having me. Yeah, no problem, man. Anything I can do to, to promote the um, – just, just stick around for one second. All right, everybody, I'm going to rock and roll out of here, and I appreciate you stopping by. Next week, I don't have a guest yet, but next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, I will be at Delaware Paddle Sports with Rashawn Hunt. We're going to go over the Snakehead Trail from the Legion of Anglers. So if you guys want to check that out, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and then I'll see you next Tuesday night at 7.